11, to her sister in Madrid. Besides the worry caused by Father Antonio's ill health, our mother was also anxious about the choice of a place in which to settle. She was not satisfied with Anjohar, and with her usual tact she expresses the pros and cons of going to Madrid or to Cordova, as their friends were urging them. In Madrid, Mother Pillar was able to speak to Don Victoriano Gisasola, then Bishop of Ciudad Real, and a great friend of Father Antonio. She also consulted his nephew Victoriano Gisasola Menenez, who was then in the service of his uncle, and who was later to become the Cardinal Primate of Toledo. Anjujar The 13th of March 1877 Pax Christi My dear sister, Our Lord is always a Father of mercies and God of all consolation. Yesterday we had a letter from Sir Francisca, and today you have cheered us up. Please God Father will have no more setbacks if that is his will. Keep strictly to the doctor's orders, and see that Father follows them too, for a relapse is generally worse than the illness itself. Is his mind becoming clearer? That is what upsets me most about him. I enclose two letters which I received yesterday afternoon, ealing as you see, with the business of Cordova. I am glad that you are still getting on with our affairs there. As we said when I was with you, it would be good for us to settle in Madrid on account of the spiritual help we could get, above all as we are beginning. But I realize that our lack of funds would make it very difficult to find a suitable house the size we need the prices are so high. Some people here have a house in Calpentijos, but I do not know if it would be big enough, although it cannot be small because they are a large family. They want to sell a house here and go to live there. As for our going to Cordova, I think that before coming to a decision we ought to make sure of our rules, and above all be certain that Father would be received with the respect due to him and have access to our house just as before. Otherwise, I think it would be very rash. However, many assurances were given me, I would always be afraid of what might happen in the future, for the burnt child dreads the fire. Now, if we were admitted into the diocese with that point settled and everything else perfectly agreed and assured, I would not mind so much because we would be going in with our foundations well laid, and when any difficulties arise, as they will, we would have some protection, and not have to go through all this again. Let me know your opinion, and Don Victoriano's. May our Lord give us light to do only what he wills, for in seeking that we shall have peace, and be able to attend properly to our own spiritual good and that of others. My kindest regards to Father Antonio, to Carmen and to Father Thomas, do not think I ever forget you. Your affectionate sister, Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, 12, to her sister in Madrid, on hearing of Fr. Antonio's illness, his brother Don Isidore Ortiz went to Madrid, on the advice of one of the doctors he thought of taking him home to San Juan de Luz, hence mother's reference in the postscript. Meanwhile her own feelings alternated between optimism and anxiety caused by her uncertainty about the best place for making the foundation. The town council offered her the convent of St. John of God. Although mother liked it, she could not accept it because of the costly repairs and alterations needed to make it habitable for the novices. Anjujar, the 17th of March 1877. My dear sister, you will see from the enclosed letter, which I received today, 17, that Don Ricardo complains that you have not answered his letters, one of which I forwarded to you, the other he sent direct. I cannot think why you haven't answered, for, as he says in the letter, an urgent reply is needed about the business of the house. I think that perhaps you have not answered because you do not want to trouble father, but as it is such a simple question it won't worry him much. I see that our affairs unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, are going from bad to worse. There is nothing for it but patience. We have few resources left now, and when we have exhausted those we shall have to decide on whatever seems most prudent and most suitable for the good of our souls. We must make up our minds that Father will not be able to do anything now or for a long time to come.
Although you haven't told me how he is, I am quite aware of the state he is in. We are in great need of strength and of God's grace, especially I who am so weak, so as not to give up in face of these difficulties, especially at time. Don't be upset, our Lord is helping us, but I cannot go on any longer. I know this is a cowardly thing to say, but what can I do? I have no more strength left. May God forgive me, I don't want this to happen to me, neither do I want to give up this enterprise if it is his work. I pray night and day, begging God that if this thought comes from the devil, he may not get his own way. Your letter today convinces me more than ever that Father is in a very precarious state. How much you must be suffering, for goodness' sake don't get ill yourself. God is our Father, and in spite of what I said before I am quite conformed to his will. What has the doctor decided about Father's illness? Tell me clearly, I cannot go on in this uncertainty. Today I went to look over the convent of St. John of God, as it is the more suitable one for us. I like it very much, it is large and convenient, and it should not need much spent on it to make it habitable. Don Diego says that the rent is about six or eight reals. If that is the case, then we have plenty with what Ramon gives us for our house. There are many private houses, but I don't think any of them are as suitable as St. John of God. May the Lord be blessed for everything. We have arranged, there, I have been interrupted, and I cannot remember what I was going to say. Last night we had a visit from the Marquis of Sta, Amelia, his sister and Juan or Pepe Gomez of Villa del Rio. They stayed for an hour and a half, and they offered their help, and they asked kindly after you. Tell Carmen to write often, she can offer it up for father. Now I remember what I was going to tell you. We have arranged for each of us to take turns in making a day's retreat, so that there will always be one of us at prayer. On Friday it was my turn, on Saturday, Santiago's, and today, Sunday, it's Sister Casimiro's turn. May God help us in this great trial. This is my prayer for all, and especially for you. Your loving sister, Mary of the Sacred Heart, let me know if Father intends to go, and if he is still so drowsy, and if his brother helps you, and still wants to carry out his plan. 13. To her sister in Madrid. On the 19th of March, Father Antonio Ortiz died unexpectedly in Madrid. Mother Pillar sent a telegram immediately to Don Juan Vegas, a professor in the seminary at Cordova, and a friend of the poorest family, entrusting to him the painful task of breaking the sad news to Mother Rafaela Mary. Aching advantage of his visit to Anjohar, he tried to persuade Mother to return to Cordova. He intended to talk the novices round to his point of view, but Mother spoiled his plan and the only one he was able to speak to was his sister, Mariana. In this difficulty, mother turned to Ramon for advice, and together they decided that he should go at once to Madrid to find out more about what Mother Pillar had mentioned in a letter, that is that she had seen the auxiliary bishop of Toledo who had charge of the affairs of religious and was in favor of their making a foundation in Madrid. Anjuhar the 23rd of March, 1877. Pax Christi. My dear sister, Ramon will have told you that Don Juan Vegas came and the purpose of his visit. Don Ricardo wrote the day before yesterday. I enclose his letter for you to read. People here have guessed that we are not going to stay and we are told they are very much upset. Last night, I had a long talk with Don Diego the chaplain, who tried to convince me that this is the most suitable place for us, that we should not go from here by any means, that everything is favorable to us here, including the bishop, that it is better to be sure. He said that Don Eleutherio had spoken to him that morning, and he is of the same opinion. He is going to advise me not to go back to Cordova. They are both prejudiced against Don Juan Vegas, because they say that he came to persuade me to go back. I felt rather embarrassed because I didn't want to displease him, neither did I want to tell him what had happened. We shall see what God wants. As a matter of fact, Don Juan did argue 
and very forcefully too, about our returning to Cordova. I'll tell you more when you come. I answered him, however, that I cannot give him a reply until we have talked about it, and when we have made up our minds, I'll let him or Don Ricardo know. He told me we could count on him for everything. He left by the 10 o'clock train this morning. I believe he wanted to speak to the novices, but I took care to be on the alert, because I was afraid he was coming to do the devil's work. He did have a few words alone with Sister Pelagio, but thank God, he could not move her. Don Juan's ideas to get us to desist from attempting anything new, and to do as Morot suggests, bring the visitation nuns here. They have an excellent spirit. After thinking it all out carefully, I agreed with the latter, and even with the former I did, if there is no other way out. But I was still ready to work as much as possible for what I believe God wills for me. I already feel the effects of the intercession of our unforgettable father. Since he died, I have been quite at peace. Even before I knew I could not explain my feelings, and I received the news with great serenity. True, I felt great sorrow for his loss, and still feel it, and want to do so. That is as it should be, and is a sweet sorrow, and I am glad that I felt the influence of our holy and blessed martyr. I did all I could to break the news gently to the novices one by one, but it was impossible. Some overheard the others in their natural grief, and they all came in. Dolores had such a bad attack, we thought it was going to be something serious, but she came round after taking some bitter orange leaves. She had two further attacks that night, I think, and again next morning, but thank God, she is all right now. We had solemn services and masses for him yesterday and the day before, at which all were present, though seven novices had to leave. Several priests and other people came in afterwards to offer their sympathy, and they are still coming today. I expected Father to have a holy death. It could not have been otherwise, for we know that death is just an echo of life. As for us, we are praying to him as to a saint. Carmen's letter at first gave me immense joy, because I thought that Father had not died, she gave me the news so vaguely that I did not grasp it. I was about to send you a telegram when a letter from Sor Francisca was given me by Sor Antonia. Do not know how we shall ever repay these sisters. They could not do more for us, and I see they do the same for you. Please give my kind regards to Don Isidro. Think very highly of him, and would very much like to meet him. Although I do not know him, give him my best wishes. Please God, we shall soon be in our own house, wherever he wills us to have it. The novices are very well and very submissive to me. My love to our dear Carmen and to our brother and to the sisters of that hospitable house. By good wishes to Don Tomas and to all. Yours affectionately, Mary of the Sacred Heart. to Miss Ana Maria de Biza, Anjuhar, the 23rd of March 1877, Pax Christi, my dear Ana Maria, I received your letter on the 21st of March, dated 15. I was surprised that you had not written to me as it is a month since I last wrote, but I am sure you have not been able to do so. I am glad that you are still filled with good desires. May our Lord help you to fulfill them. Perhaps you have already heard of the latest trial which our Lord has sent us. He has taken our blessed and saintly Father to himself. So I return the letter which you enclosed for him. He will take much more care of us now than he did before, because he is with him whom he loved so much, and whom he desired so much to see love. My sister had the great joy of receiving his last sigh. He died the death of the just. Rather than death, it was just a passing on. A few moments before the end he blessed my sister and another lady, a widow who was with her. Then he peacefully expired. How he will be enjoying heaven now. Happy he, now receiving the reward of his labors, crowned with the unfading crown of the saints. His will not be the least brilliant of them all. 
Let us imitate him, my dear. Let us become saints, as he wanted us so much to be. He will help us more now than when he was in this veil of tears. I hope you will be very resigned to this loss. Our Father would wish it so. Let us place all our trust in our good Jesus, and have no fears. Don't go to extremes in your grief. I say this because I know you are easily upset. Forgive me, I must say this because I love you. Pray hard for us all, and especially for me, that I may make no blunders in the charge which has been thrust upon me. My love to your sister, I give her the same advice as to you. I send you both a loving embrace in the heart of Jesus. 15. To Miss Ana Maria de Biza in Velez Malaga. This letter was written on the very day at the Cardinal Archbishop of Toledo. His Eminence Juan de la Cruz Morno Masonave signed the approbation of the new institute, which for a few years was known by the name of Sisters of Reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The novices had arrived in Madrid only 12 days previously and had stayed in the Princess Hospital where Sor Francisca had kindly given them accommodation. Four days later they settled temporarily in an apartment in the Cal de la Bola. Mother Foundress gives some details of their life there. Madrid The 14th of April 1877 Pax Christi My very dear Ana Maria it has been impossible for me to write to you before this, because there is so much to do. But today though time is still scarce I want to send you a few lines while I am keeping an eye on a workman. Tomorrow or the next day, please God, we shall once more put on our holy habits, and we shall have mass in our sweet provisional chapel. We are living in a flat at the moment, and here we have our chapel, until the Lord provides a more suitable place. We have our enclosure, of course, otherwise we could not wear our habits. We feel very palpably that Father is helping us from heaven. Often in our difficulties we feel that his prayers are obtaining relief for us. I am sending you a small piece of his cassock. I know you will be pleased to have it. Give a piece to your sister too. When I have time I'll send you a beautiful poem dedicated to him, composed by a lady in Seville. His biography is being written, and if I can get hold of a copy I'll send it to you. There are cheap excursion trains for the Feast of St. Isidore, so try to come. You could then see us and also visit our blessed Father's tomb. Don't forget the holy advice he used to give you, and which I repeat, we must be saints at all costs. Our director has now been nominated. He is very good, a Jesuit who shows great interest in our affairs, but he falls far short of the saint we have lost. He was the man of 19th century. I have received your letter, and a few lines from your sister we all send you an embrace especially. Yours affectionately in our Lord, Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Sixteen to Miss Ana Maria de Biza in Velez Malaga. The illness to which Mother Foundress refers was very serious and kept her confined to bed from the end of April. Not until Whitsun was she able to get up for Mass. The auxiliary bishop, Don Siriaco Sancha y Hervas, decided to give the habit himself to the three postulants who had entered towards the end of their stay in Cordova. The date chosen on which our mother and her sister were to make their vows 18th June was the Feast of the Sacred Heart that ye Madrid. The 21st of May 18771. Pax Christi. My dear Anna Maria, I have not been able to write before this, as I wished to do, because I have been ill. Even now, although I am better, I am rather weak still and my pen feels like lead in my hand. Yesterday we had a clothing ceremony. Dolores is now S. Stanislaus. She was not going to take that name, but it seemed to be the will of God. And needed is Sister Luis Gonzaga, and Encarnacion is Espiritu Santo. The auxiliary bishop, who is like a real father to us, gave them the habit. The ceremony went off very well, with great solemnity. 
The chaplain said to me afterwards, I have never seen a more moving ceremony. Some ladies who were present also found it most impressive. The singing and the music were excellent better than ever. It really seemed that the angels took part and helped everyone who had anything to do in it. Today I shall not forget the relics of our Holy Father. We have had a visit from a brother of his who resembles him very much, especially his mouth, eyes and hands. He is also a talented man. He says he thinks highly of us because of his brother's special affection for us. I cannot think of such a beloved father without heartache. I do believe that our Lord was greatly pleased by the three spotless victims who were consecrated to him. They themselves were wildly happy, and we all shared their joy. I went to recreation the first time for 22 days. My sister and I will make our vase on the 8th of June, if our Lord does not dispose otherwise. Pray that we may prepare selves well for such a big step. I believe it is our blessed Father who is obtaining all these joes for us. May our Lord increase his glory. Besides the peace of his cassock, I am sending you one of the little pictures which he always carried with him. Please ask Ma, Manuela to consider this letter as for her too, as I cannot write any more. Don't forget to pray for my intentions. I embrace you both in the heart of Jesus. Mary of the heart of Jesus. 17. To Miss Ana Maria de Biza in Velez Malaga. Madrid. After 8th June 1877. Pax Christi. My dear Ana Maria. I cannot describe the deep happiness which fills my heart, nigh that I, all unworthy as I am, at last am the spouse of our dear Jesus. With great love he has drawn me out from that Babylon, and has bound me close to himself with the sweet bonds of tender love. How can I repay him for this benefit? I am thrown into confusion, and can only ask you to help me thank him, and to respond as well as I can. The novices decorated the chapel beautifully for the day of the vase. The altar especially was lovely. They placed a blue canopy above Our Lady's statue, almost covering it with festoons of lace. The altar was full of roses and lilies. The Jesuit father received the vase and gave a magnificent sermon, very appropriate for the ceremony. Thank God for everything. Several well-known people were present, but the bishop did not come because he is in Rome. All the sisters think of you often. Hardly a day goes by on which they do not ask me when you are both coming. I tell them to pray hard for you. How are your affairs progressing? I only wish I had some means so that if God wills you could come, if you know this is your true vocation. The dowry has been fixed at 2,000 duros. That works out at six reels a day. Pray with great faith for our Lord to smooth out all difficulties. The music which our blessed Father ordered for us from France has arrived. It's magnificent. The initials which I put after my name stand for Congregation of Sisters of Reparation to the Heart of Jesus, which is the name we are to have. When I can I want to make a copy of some of his counsels which a sister has written down. Don't forget anything he told you. Make a note of it and never forget it. Let us all be very holy and very generous towards God the two of us, your own dear sister, and mine as well, and that, even were there to be no reward, as our dear father used to say, but only for the joy of loving and serving him. My sister is fine in body and heart. I love you both very much in the Lord, and I long for you and Ma, Manuela to be entirely his, as I wish to be myself. Yours affectionately. Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. 18. To Miss Ana Maria de Biza in Velez Malaga. The Biza sisters were in a difficult financial position. They could not provide the requisite dowry, and so were unable to fulfill their desire of entering religious life. Our mother would have received them without a dowry if she could have obeyed the dictates of her heart, but at that time this was not possible. 
However, she did all in her power to procure the necessary means for them, so that these true vocations might not be lost. The three letters which follow contain instances of her eagerness to help. Madrid The 7th of July 1877 Pax Christi My ever dear one in our Lord I was as pleased as ever to receive your letter, which one have not answered before through lack of time. Although I must say that I do not have to spend so much time here with visitors as I did in Cordova or when we were in the other house in Cal de la Bola, because here we are farther from the center. We are getting on very well here. We hardly notice the heat because, I think, the ventilation is good. We are told that in the center of Madrid the heat is suffocating. I have read your dear letter very carefully, and I read it to my sister to see if the two of us could find a way of accepting your idea. If this had happened at any other time, there would have been no hesitation on our part, but at present we are in difficulties because of all the expenses we have had to meet. It is not that I don't love poverty, but now I regret it because I cannot say to you come at once as I would very much like to do. I do not see much hope here at present, because we shall be in straitened circumstances for some time to come. But I shall not give up trying to find some means by which we could see your desires and mine fulfilled. I have an idea, and with God's help and your prayers I am going to try it. I know some ladies who are said to be very rich, and who are very fond of us. We are going to invite them to come on Monday for the ceremony of vase of Sister Pedro and Sister Pelagio. Afterwards I'll speak to them about your situation and, and we'll see what comes of that. I'll write and tell you about it. My sister has just told me that she has had the same idea, and I hadn't said a word to her. I have no time for more. May God bless our desires and grant them if it is his will. Your sister in Jesus, with heartfelt desires for you to be saints. Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Maria de Santiago and Sister Casimiro made their vase last Monday. Santiago has changed her name to Maria de Jesus and Casimiro to Sister Jose. The lay sister who made her profession has taken the name of Sister Antonio, not of Padua, but after Father Ortiz. Oh, that beloved father, I cannot forget him. 19. To Miss Ana Maria de Biza Madrid The 6th of August 1877 My dear Ana Maria I spoke to the ladies whom I mentioned in my last letter, and they say they cannot help us because they have recently had some reverses, they did tell me of another lady, to whom I wrote at once, but she has not decided anything either one way or the other. When our messenger went to ask what she was going to do, she answered that she had not yet decided, but would let us know. This is why I have not written to you before. But I cannot let another day go by without giving you some news. I know you want only what God wills, but naturally you like to know what is happening. Blessed be God for everything. I'll let you know the lady's final decision. If you have the Anno Cristiano read about the mystery of the Transfiguration today, and you will see how instructive it is our Lord wants us to follow his path. So courage let us go forward. Even though the thorns pierce through to the bone, what does it matter? He has bathed them in his blood. We must not turn back in face of difficulties. He will give us courage and confidence if we are faithful and trust in him. We are now seven professed religious, six mothers and a sister ask him who has chosen us for himself to make us true and faithful spices, ask him that we may never offend him, that we may cooperate with the many graces he gives us, that we may love him with all our hearts, and even become fools for the sake of his cross, as our Holy Father desired. Our Lord will repay your desires and all you have done to help these young women to consecrate themselves to him. I believe that his greatest rewards will be for those who have helped others to consecrate themselves to him. The virtue of purity is so beautiful and so pleasing to him, and it is exposed to such great danger in the world. I am very busy today. I embrace you both warmly and hope to be able to give you good news soon. May we always live united in the heart of Jesus bound together with the same bond. 
yours, Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Twenty to Miss Anna Maria de Biza. When they first took over the rented house in which the community was now living, the two sisters undertook to buy it, paying by installments. In order to raise the necessary money, the foundresses thought of selling some of their property in Pedro Abad. This business needing personal attention, Mother Pillar made several journeys to Cordova. The first of these lasted from fifth. September until the 17th of October of that year. As soon as the novices were settled in Cuatro Caminos, they began their apostolate. They opened a school for the small girls of the district, all of them poor, and they prepared some young girls to receive the sacraments. Still hoping that Anna Maria and her sister would be able to enter the novitiate soon mother foundress sends her a list of things she would need to take with her. In fact, permission was obtained to admit them without a dowry, so they left for Madrid with Mother Pillar on her return from Cordova. Madrid, the 8th of September, 1877. Pax Christi, my dear and unforgettable Anna Maria, I cannot let Our Lady's feast go by without writing to you. Don't think I have forgotten you, far from it. As usual, I have been too busy to write. My sister went to Cordova on Monday. God always asks very much of her, and she gives him everything. She has a generous heart, eager to make sacrifices, and burning with zeal for souls. Our saintly father instilled his own spirit into her. May our Lord do all that he desires with her. Today, we have had a beautiful mass at which several young girls and children who belong to the catechism class have received Holy Communion. Afterwards, many more who are not yet ready to receive our Lord went to confession. We have consecrated them all to Our Lady so that she may take them under her motherly care. Enclosed is the list of clothing which you asked for. You do not need everything at once. For the three months postulantship the things you have at home are sufficient. Afterwards, your outfit can be made during the two years of novitiate. As for the aprons, so far as I am concerned, they could be made out of the material you have already. But as we have everything in common, they should all be as similar as possible. If you have bought linen for sheets and it's wider than the kind we use, it doesn't matter. I'm telling you this because some postulants have cut it. Let the sewing be very simple, as little as possible by machine, and not much backstitching. This letter is for Maria Manuela as well as for you, so let her read it too. I see you are very courageous and ready to carry the cross. I am glad of that, because the road on which you want to set out is the same one as that taken by him who has chosen you for his very own, so your journey must lead where his did and end as his did. Some people think that on entering religion, they will be freed from all temptations, dislikes, etc. They are mistaken, it is quite the contrary. These things increase, only there is one means of relieving them and of overcoming them, and that is to despise them, keeping your eyes fixed on the goal, and above all, make yourselves fools with the folly of the cross and the love of God as our saintly father used to say, a generous soul gazing on Jesus Christ crucified will accept anything with joy. No more for today. I embrace you and send you my love, hoping to see you soon in your usual good spirits. Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus.